Hello and welcome to another session on Data Sage interview questions and answers. In today's session, we are going to discuss about some questions that are always asked in all Data Sage interviews. So stay tuned. As always, if you like this video, then please like, share, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Let's begin. So the first question that you would always be asked is to describe your work experience as an ETL developer or a data sage developer. So there are some points that you need to mention while answering this question. So you can start by mentioning your technical skills. For example, let's say you are mostly a data sage developer. So you can say that your primary skill set is data stage, but you also have work experience, a few years work experience and whatever. So Microsoft BI or Cognos or whatever experience you have. So you can mention other skill sets as well. Then you can also mention the kind of projects in which you have worked upon. So you might have worked upon multiple projects in your past. So you can mention that you have worked on projects which were the data warehousing projects, which were data migration projects, probably data stage upgrade projects, and so on. Then you can also mention the project phase. So you might have worked as a developer in a development project. You might have also worked as a developer in a production support project. So you can mention that as well if you have experience in these different phases of the project and then you can add the domains in which you have worked so if you have worked for a banking client if you have worked for a retail client if you have worked for some telecommunication organization so you can mention all those and lastly you can also mention the roles in which you have worked so you can mention that you have worked as a developer then you progress to working as a technical lead or probably you have worked as a solution designer so whatever is your experience these are the five or six broad points that you should cover including the skill sets that you have the kind of projects that you have the phase different phases in which you have worked the domains you have worked and the roles that you have played in your history now the next question as a data search developer that you would always be asked is a question on partitioning. So this question is basically to test your basic uh, conceptual knowledge of data stage and because partitioning is a very important feature of data stage, you would get some question or the other on this. So you should be aware of the benefits of partitioning in data stage and you should also be aware of the different kinds of partitioning and where they are used, what are the advantages or disadvantages of using them and what care should be taken while using them. And the main ones that you should remember always are the hash partitioning, which is used for the joint stages, the entire partitioning, which is used for the lookup stages, the same partitioning, which is basically used to prevent repartitioning and round robin, which is equally for the equal distribution of data across partitions. So you should be aware of all the advantages of these partitioning and where they are used. So this is a question that you would always be asked in all data stage interviews. Now I have briefly mentioned the use of all these partitioning techniques, but if you want detailed information on all these, then I would be putting the link above. So you can click on the link above. I would also be putting the link in the description box below. So you can go to the description box and click on those links and go to the detailed videos on these partitioning techniques as well. Now the next question that is always asked in all data stage interviews is about the difference between the join and lookup stages. So again, join, uh, you know, is used for large volume of data. You need to sort the data before using the join stage. And that is why it is faster for huge volumes of data because data is already sorted and partitioned. Lookup is used when your reference data is small enough to fit in your RAM and that makes it very fast. And this is where you can use entire partitioning as well. So these are the things you can mention while answering the question. Again, if you want to go to the detailed videos and I'll be putting the links above, you can click on the link above or go to the description box below and click on the link and go to the detailed videos as well. Now, these two questions that we have seen so far, partitioning, join versus lookup, these are very conceptual questions. And these would be asked to see how much of an understanding you have of the basic concepts of data stage. So based on your answers, how you answer these questions, the interviewer would get an idea that, okay, this person has a good understanding. And then he would probably then proceed to case or scenario based questions for you. Now, one such question would always be on slowly changing dimensions. 
especially if you've mentioned that you have experience in data warehousing projects as well. So they would be asking you, how did you implement the slowly changing dimension in your project? Or can you tell the various approaches to implementing a slowly changing dimension? So this is where you have to mention that the different stages or whatever you have done in your project, you can mention that as well. So that you can use a change data capture stage to implement the SCDs. You can uh, use the slowly changing dimension stages as well, or you can just use a transformer, compare the data, which is historically there in your dimension table and your current input data, compare it and then uh, identify your inserts and updates and so on. So that is also one approach that is used in many data warehousing projects that I've actually worked upon. So I have seen this approach in many places. So you have to mention whichever way you have implemented your slowly changing dimension as well worked upon. You can also mention that there are other ways as well. Uh, like you could have used the slowly changing dimension stage as well, but you have used this stage in your project and this is the reason why you have used and so on. So again, if you want detailed um, videos on these topics, the links are above and in the description box. Now the next question that you would always be asked is what is the most complex or challenging technical scenario you have worked upon? So it would differ, your answer would differ based on your experience and your experience level, how many years of experience you have. But these are broadly the kind of uh, scenarios that the interviewer is looking for. So you can mention any complex job logics that you might have implemented. So it could be uh, complex calculation, probably some complex looping logic or so on. So you can mention that. So that is a data stage based implementation data stage job logic. Uh, you can also mention scenarios where you might have handled huge data volumes and you might have made some changes to the job uh, to handle that huge data volumes or probably to your tables or probably to your Unix script or so on. So you can mention those scenarios. You can mention your ETL integration challenges. So you might have got some uh, legacy or some complex data sources or data targets which you might have needed to integrate in your ETL solution. So you can mention those kind of challenges. And then lastly, you can mention any challenge which is related to the performance improvement of the job. So probably there was a slow running job and you made some changes to improve the performance of the job and it was a challenge and you had to identify what you needed to change to improve the performance and so on. So these are the kind of answers the interviewer is looking for. And based on your experience, you can frame your answers based on these broad points. And then the most important one is how do you debug your code? So this basically the interviewer is looking for your approach in debugging your code. And if you are a data stage developer, then your approach, the first approach, the first place where you need to look for any data stage job failures is your data stage director. So your data stage director would contain warnings and error messages and based on those messages you can identify that where the error might have occurred and then you can analyze your job and try to fix the error. Second thing you have to remember is that you are always backtracking the data. So if, the, if there's some data issue in the target or in the target of the, your data stage job, then you have to go back stage by stage and then try to analyze where things might have gone wrong. So it's always backtracking of the data. And then you can use a job performance monitor as well. So job performance monitor would basically tell you how many records were processed by which stage. So you can identify things like, uh, did the records get dropped somewhere or was there an issue with any particular state? These kind of things can be identified using the job performance monitor. And lastly, you can use the peak stages. So you can make a copy of your job. Um, you can use the peak stages in between your different data stage stages that you have and then analyze your intermediate data. So that is one thing that you would need to do if you uh, need to, if you have logic in multiple places on your job. So you need to identify that what happened to the data in between these two particular stages. And you can just take out one link and 
uh, attach it to the peak stage and peak stage would some sample data would be written sample output data would be written to the peak stage and you can analyze that data and this is where inserting copy stages in your job becomes useful because then you do not have to change your job uh, you, you do not have to make too many modifications for it to, uh, to your job to insert the peak stages so that can be one approach and that is what you need to mention to your interviewer as well so these are some of the questions that uh, are always asked in data stage interviews. So you, if you uh, frame your answers based on some pointer that we have mentioned in this video, it would really help uh, you give a meaningful answer to the interviewer. So I hope you like this video and thank you for watching this video. Please do not forget to subscribe and there would be many more videos coming up soon. Thank you again for watching this video.